Zeebler is a free plugin for Cinema 4D that adds depth of field without pesky alpha channels getting in the way. If you want to learn and use Zeebler, stay tuned. What's up, Survivalists? It's Jay from Team WNJ here. If you're not subscribed already, what are you waiting for? Subscribe now and hit that bell icon to get notifications whenever I upload on Monday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Don't forget that a story of Levisleer is taking over by Storm. Let's try to get this video up to five likes once again. Now let's get to the tutorial. So here we are in Cinema 4D. I already have Zeebler installed. In fact, this is the same scene that the last tutorial on how to make the water was on. I made a new camera and set up a villager here so I can demonstrate depth of field much better. Now the first thing you gotta do to use Zeebler is go up to plugins and drop down Zeebler and hit Zeebler. This will create a Zeebler object in your scene and it'll start radiating these blue lines from whatever active camera you're using. From here, let's say I want to focus on this villager right here. Let's click on our Zeebler object and select Open Manager as well as Open Preview. Move these aside so we can still work in the viewport. In the Zeebler Manager, go into the Z buffer settings and drop down the depth settings. This is the main thing we'll be fiddling with to get the correct blur that we want. The first option here is the distance. This controls how far away the first bar starts. So if we increase this, you see that the first bar moves further and further away from the camera. If we decrease it, it gets really close to the camera. The second option here, length, controls the distance between the bars. So if we start shrinking this, you're gonna notice that the bars start coming together. If we leave these apart, they're gonna start spreading really far apart. I'll get to the fall off in a quick moment, but what you wanna do is line up the white bar with whatever you want in focus. So in my case, is this villager. If we look at the bars, you're gonna notice that one is white and the other is completely blue. In between, it starts fading between the two. White means completely in focus, blue means completely out of focus. Everything in between is fading between in and out of focus. Everything before this white line is in focus. Everything after this blue line is out of focus. So now if we render from down here, you're gonna notice that the villager is in focus, but everything in the background is out of focus. Let me pull out a cinema for a moment to teach you guys something about depth of field. Here I've got a camera focused on me. The current focal length is 18 millimeters. Take a look and note how blurry the background is. It shouldn't be too blurry, especially those anime posters back there. It shouldn't be too blurry. But the second I crank up my focal length and zoom it in, now the focal length is on 55. Take a look at how much blurrier that background gets. The higher your focal length, the more intense your depth of field will be. Now, how does that relate to cinema? Well, if you click on your camera, you're gonna notice the focal length option here. If you've got a really wide angle like that, it doesn't make sense for there to be extreme depth of field. On the other hand, if you're using something like a telescopic, it doesn't make sense for there to be no depth of field. In my case, I'm using a normal lens on a 50, so there should be a moderate amount of depth of field. If I want to increase the amount of blur, all I have to do is go to the Z buffer settings and turn down the distance. This way the distance between the focus and the non-focus gets smaller and smaller, which means more stuff in the distance gets blurred. Now I've gone and dropped in another villager here. Let's say we want to focus on this villager. If we just try to up the distance all the way over to there and then hit render, it's not going to look quite right because our foreground is still in focus. We need a way to blur the background and the foreground simultaneously. This is where the fall off chart comes in handy. The top of the fall off here means extremely blurry and at the end of these waves. The beginning means completely in focus and it's the start of these waves. If we want it to be blurry in the beginning, we gotta move this up, and we still want it to be blurry at the end, which means that what we want in focus is right in the middle. Let's hold down control, click on this line, which will create a new point, and we can drag that down. Now, if we look at these waves, you're gonna notice that the middle one is now white. I don't like having just one bar white, I usually like pulling another one down and just giving it from 0.4 to 0.6, a little bit of focus space right there. Now, let's pull the distance back so we can line up this white bar with our villager. And sometimes if your computer is slow, you may not want to be rendering this entire time. That's where this preview window comes in handy. Simply click on it once and it'll activate. Whatever's white is in focus, whatever's black is out of focus. If you change something, this is not going to update automatically unless you check the auto refresh here. If you want it to refresh, simply just double click it and it'll refresh. Let's render it to see how it looks. And indeed, there we go. That is the only thing in focus. Something you can do to make your blur a little bit more realistic is if you go into your manager and go to the blur tab, we can change the blur type from simple to lens and then change the lens type from round to n-sided. This simulates the depth of field blur on an actual camera. The n-sided shape here is actually the shape of the aperture. Now if we render this, it just looks a bit more realistic. If we want to increase the amount of blur, simply change the sample radius up a notch. So let's say five, for example. You never really want to go this high. I'm just using it as an example. There we go. We've ranked up the blur like crazy. One of my viewers is actually having a problem where it's rendering this black and white image. That's simple. Just go into enable zebra buffering and turn that off. Don't have that on. So there you have it. That's how I use Zeebler to make Levisleer. Speaking of Levisleer, if you haven't watched it already, now's your chance. This thing aired at PAX Australia 2018. It's an epic animated web series that's been in development for the past six years. Hey, you gotta give me some props for that. This video was requested by a whole bunch of my viewers, so if you have any tutorials that you wanna request, leave them in the comments below or send me a message directly on Discord. 
If you want anything more from me, do check out our Patreon and see if there's anything there right for you. Currently, we're offering one-on-one -on -one private discussions with me, early access to new episodes of Love of Slayer, as well as exclusive renders and behind-the-scenes footage. So if that sounds right for you, our Patreon is linked in the description down below. That's patreon.com slash teamwnj. Hey, don't forget to subscribe with that bell icon enabled and give this video a like. Cheers!